Hi there, I'm Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition. And in this video, I wanted to go over some basic boxing footwork for beginners. Now you probably already know the footwork for the jab, but we're gonna do a quick little recap nonetheless. And I will leave links in the description below on how to throw all the basic punches in detail. So let's take a look at that footwork for the jab. Well, if you're not moving anywhere, then the basic footwork to throw a jab is gonna be the rotation of your lead hip, like so. But just two little quick reminders. First, don't let your elbow flare off to the side, as that will cause you to lose power of your jab. So keep your elbow in and throw that jab in a straight line. And two, make sure that your shoulder comes up high enough to protect your chin as you throw the jab. Moving on to the straight or the cross. Now remember that it's thrown in a straight line from your rear hand. And to throw it hard, you're gonna have to raise up your rear heel and push off the canvas with that rear foot as you rotate your core to transfer all of your weight into your shot. Okay, so let's move on to a quick recap on how to throw the hooks. Remember that throwing powerful hooks is all about the rotation of your body. There's actually little movement from your elbow or your shoulder once your arm is placed in the proper punching position. For the lead foot, I always like to imagine myself squashing out a cigarette butt on the ground as I internally rotate my leg to deliver the shot. The more powerful you can use your legs to rotate your core, then the more powerful your punch is gonna be. Now the same principle applies to the footwork for the rear hook. Remember that you're looking to use your feet to push off the canvas and quickly rotate your legs and hips and core, which will then have your arm flying through the air towards your opponent in an arc-like motion. And again, you're going to want to use your footwork to cause a powerful rotation of your core, which is going to equate into a much more powerful punch. Perfect. So you have your basic punches down. And if you're hitting the heavy bag or you have someone standing right in front of you, then you feel like a destroyer of worlds. But in real life, there's a little problem. Pretty much no one is going to stand right in front of you and let you hit them. So my friend, you're probably going to need to get yourself from point A to point B. Now I know that sounds easy. You think you could just walk over, but it's not as easy as it sounds because you need to be able to get there without getting hit. And you need to be ready to deliver your own shots the instant that you get there. And so the best way to do that is to get yourself from point A to point B while remaining in your proper boxing stance so that you can be both offensively and defensively effective. So from your boxing stance, you're going to lift your lead leg and propel yourself forward by pushing off of the canvas using your rear foot. Once that lead foot is firmly in place, you're going to bring in your rear leg to return yourself to your normal boxing stance. By moving forward using this method, you're ensuring that your feet are never going to cross and that you remain on balance, ready to attack or defend. Now, if you're moving backwards, then you're going to want to reverse this process and move the rear foot first. So raise the rear foot up and use your lead foot to push off the canvas and propel yourself backward. And if you're going to move laterally from side to side, then you're always first going to move the foot that's to the outside. So what I mean is that if you're moving to your left, then your left foot must move first. And if you're moving to your right, then your right foot will move first. This will once again ensure that your feet never cross. Because if your feet do cross, you're going to have very little offense or defense. Now, if you want to do a quick change of direction to change your angle, then you should use the boxing pivot. And I will leave a link to the boxing pivot in the description below. So to make a long story short, using this type of footwork will allow you to advance or retreat from your target while maintaining a proper boxing stance. And that's going to give you a biomechanical advantage for both your offensive and defensive maneuvers. Okay, so now you can punch and you can move, but can you punch and move at the same time? Hmm, let's take a look at throwing a jab as you move. Being able to punch as you move is drastically going to increase the range of your punches. For example, just throwing the jab without movement will give you a range of B, but by using proper footwork, you could extend your range all the way to point A. As you lift your lead foot, continue to use that rear foot to push off the canvas and propel yourself forward. The only difference this time is that you will synchronize your jab to be thrown in tandem with your lead foot. So notice here that both my jab and my lead leg extend out together. You can double up your jab to increase your range even further, but just keep in mind that you also need to double up your steps to match your jabs as well. So notice here that I take a step for each and every jab that I throw. And now the main thing that I want you to notice is how much ground I can cover by simply doubling up my jab. I can pretty much get halfway across the ring. Now let's take a look at the footwork for the cross. 
Most beginners have the bad habit of overreaching to land their cross. That punch is going to have very little power and it's going to leave the beginner vulnerable to counters as they're going to be off balance. So to throw the cross you have a couple of options here. One of which is throwing the cross in a similar fashion to the way that you threw the jab. You're going to throw it in tandem with the motion of your lead leg as you use your rear foot to push off of the canvas and drive both you and your punch forward toward the target. This is quick and you're also going to be covering enough distance to land the punch. The drawback to this option is that the cross is not as powerful as it could be. Option number two, and I'm going to slow this down so you can see the difference. See, I first step forward using my lead leg. Then I slide my rear foot into position and assume my proper boxing stance. And the instant my rear foot arrives, I plant it into the canvas and use it to rotate my core and deliver a powerful cross. Now this is not going to be as quick as option one because you're not coming and throwing. You're only throwing once you're in position. But it's the more powerful shot and probably the one that you're going to use more often because it's a really useful shot when it's thrown behind the jab. Now let's take a look at throwing hooks while moving forward. Many beginners try to lunge forward while trying to throw their lead hook while their lead leg is still airborne. Now even if they land this shot, it's not going to be all that hard of a punch. Or beginners tend to reach forward as they throw their rear hook and they lift their rear foot up off of the canvas and that's the same effect, it's not going to be a very hard punch. So instead what a beginner should do is use some basic footwork to get in proper position first and then throw the lead hook. Beginners may also find it easier to land their hooks if they step diagonally to the outside to throw the punch as that will give them a better angle to land their shots and they won't have to step directly into their opponent's punches. So notice that I don't step in in a straight line, but in fact it's a diagonal step off to an angle and bam, lead hook. And the same thing goes if I step to the other side, bam, rear hook. The main point to make note of is that you first want to step with your lead leg to cover the distance and then bring in your rear foot to return yourself to a proper boxing stance and then you can throw your powerful hook. Using your footwork to remain on balance in your proper boxing stance will ensure that you keep a biomechanical advantage in both offense and defense. And we're going to use the same footwork to throw a hook to the body. You don't want to walk in straight to your opponent's punches or smother your own hooks. So for a beginner it might be easier to step diagonally to either side to get better leverage and then throw your hook to the body. Now that you know some basic footwork, let's see if you can move with combinations. It's all about using the individual footwork for each punch together, cover the distance from A to B, and then deliver your punches with force when you get there. For example, jab as you simultaneously step with your lead leg, jab again as you step, bringing your rear leg to assume a proper boxing stance so that you can push off the canvas to rotate your core and bam, throw a hard cross. Notice now how you can move forward as you throw punches. Also notice how much distance in that ring you can cover by throwing combinations. And remember that you want to get from point A to point B while maintaining a proper boxing stance. You can use your jab to get you into position and only once you're within range assume the proper boxing stance so that you can throw power punches. That way you're never going to be caught overreaching or overextending because you're always better off to use good footwork and take that extra step if you need to than to overreach to try and land your shots. Now once you have the basic idea, use your jab and then follow up with a cross. Maybe a double jab and a cross. A jab and a right hook. A jab and a left hook. Use your imagination and start to string punches together as you move forward. As long as you remember to use proper footwork to get you from point A to point B while maintaining a proper boxing stance, you're going to be doing just fine. Finally, you're going to find tons of footwork drills. But the simplest and most effective for a beginner will be a simple box drill. A box drill will see you step forward, step laterally, step backwards, and then step laterally once more. Basically picture that there's a box on the floor and that you're using your footwork to step on all four corners of that box. That will have you moving in all four directions, front and back, and from side to side. And before you know it, all this footwork will become second nature to you. This has been Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition, and if you like these videos, then please click below to like or subscribe, as we're constantly posting up great tips and new ideas to get you into the absolute greatest shape possible.